Okay. I am live. Hey, Patty. How are you? Your pendant tick turned out beautiful. It really did. You did a good job, girlfriend. All right. Let's see here. If I stay on track today, it'll be a miracle because I've been doing three things uh, yesterday and today. And um, when I get inspired, I kind of go kind of manic. And um, and that's how I've been uh, the last couple of days. I was working right up until this moment. Um, I've got a, um, a couple of, I think, pretty good ideas uh, coming up that I'm excited to share with you guys. And um, hey, Tammy. And uh, as soon as I'm done with this demo, I'm going to go right back to it. So um, I've got a lot of irons in the fire right now. Sometimes I have like zero uh, inspiration and, uh, and motivation. But today, uh, the last few days, um, I've been going like full tilt. So uh, like I said, if I stay on track, it'll be a miracle. So there's kind of a lot going on with these earrings. Um, there's a few different steps. They're very simple, really. Uh, I'm using 16 gauge fine silver wire and uh, pretty much, well, the earrings are pretty much the 16 gauge wire, although I am using some uh, silver sheet. This is sterling sheet that I'm just going to use a couple tiny bits with. And so these will have that, ha that part will have to be pickled. Um, hey, Lori. And so I'm going to do a little water casting. I'm going to do that first. That is big fun. Uh, if you have gobs of silver, uh, it's something that you could just keep going and going with if you had a lot of silver um, and also a lot of use for the water castings. But I had done a demo on this, I think a couple years ago on the water casting, but I'm going to use a couple of them in these earrings. So I thought I'd just kind of touch base on that. It's, it's really, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but it'll refresh your memory or uh, turn you on to something new. So I'll start with that, and I'm going to be using 16 gauge wire for that. I'm using a uh, a micro torch, and you have a bowl of water nearby and some cross lock tweezers, and um, I guess we'll get started. Well, I'm going to do the the um, water castings first, and then um, I don't know. Let me show you the the earrings in case you haven't seen them although you probably did. That's these puppies right here. Oh yeah, Tammy. <laughs> I will be careful with the torch. After yesterday's mishap, uh, for those of you who might not be aware, I was filling up a different micro torch, which actually I'll be using that one in a little while. But um, these these are the um, the earrings we're gonna do today. So it's basically going to be two little pieces of silver sheet that um, I textured beforehand, the water castings that'll be soldered on, and then just some wire that I just made a couple of squiggles with, and then uh, the circle links that um, I love these, and I use them a lot in my work. I'm sure you're aware of that, uh, but I'm going to be doing a couple of those for the pairs of earrings. So, you know, this is just my take on these earrings. You can do um, whatever you want with them. You don't have to make them exactly like I'm making them. You know, you could uh, go entirely a different route if you wanted to. Hey, Deb. Lori's asking, do I get the sterling wire from Rio or something else? No, I... I get it from uh, Rio. And this is fine silver uh, of the wire that I'm using today. So uh, I, I like to use the fine silver wire for a lot of, lot of different projects. 
Okay, so that's, and you know, I initially I put a couple of bees in the center uh, instead of this extra little ring, but you could do whatever you want to do on that. Um, I'll show you when I'm putting these together if you want to stick a, a little charm in the center as long as it fits within the uh, the area of the bigger circle. So it's really, there's lots of options. You can kind of go crazy with it. All right, I'm going to set these out of the way here and get my torch. And yeah, yesterday, as some of you know, um, I was soldering and I was refilling my little red torch that I love. And I don't know, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 some years and I've never had uh, that happen. And it was a scary moment um, because I could have gotten severely injured with that. Thankfully, I did not. Okay. Just burn some hairs. All the hair on my arm is gone. Uh, arms are gone and uh, I lost a little bit of hair on the side but you know not much but I immediately you know dropped the torch and um, and started patting my hair because I was just afraid the whole thing was gonna go up and uh, and that's not really a good look so fortunately that was uh, not that bad Okay, so let me try to get all this stuff in the frame. I have some fine silver wire here. And I'm trying maybe to reposition this. I don't want to catch my phone on or melt my phone. So we'll see how this does. All right, so I have some 16 gauge wire <clears throat> right here. And I'm going to, I haven't done this in a while, so it's kind of like a refresher for me as well. I think I'm just gonna snip off a piece. And it's nothing more than just having your flame um, melt a, a little blob of silver and then it falling into the water. So let me get all the flammables away from here. All right. Hold on to this with my. Hi, Nancy. Okay, so I'm going to position Okay. So I'm just going to melt a blob and just let it fall into the water. And there it went. And that one did not make a cup shape. But that one did. Sometimes you get nice little cups and sometimes you get just little blobs.
from higher up. All right, let's see where we're at here. All right, well, I wasn't talking much while I was doing that, Patty, so I'm hoping, uh, well, at least I hope you can see what I'm doing. Um, all right, let's retrieve a few of these. They're not looking too good. I usually have better success than this, but let's see. I'd say I don't have really any cups at all. What's the deal here? I just have little nuggets. All right. Maybe I need to put... I think I might need to have my distance a little bit better. Yeah, these are just like little balls. Little, little tiny dingle balls. We don't want that. These are not going to go to waste though. I can round them out uh, on the torch a little bit more and they'll be fine. Let me put a little bit more water in here. Maybe they need to go a little bit deeper. Or maybe I have too much water. Let me change buckets here. Let's try this out. Oh, good. Okay, let's see here. And I'm going to set my torch up a little bit higher. Let's see. Can you see that? We'll try this. And we'll see if that works any better. Because I don't want to waste any more silver if I can avoid it. All right, let me All right, let's try this again. It might just have needed to be a little bit, dropping a little bit from a higher level here. Oh, well that wasn't smart. Oh my God. You know, I'm not even thinking here. <laughs> I put this in a plastic bucket and now Hang on. <laughs> oh, if I only had a brain. Hang on. have to walk in the water now. <laughs> Sue's comedy hour. 
You know, that was so stupid. I can't even believe it. Okay. Let's try this. <laughs> oh, who knew that would happen? <laughs> Somebody with a brain, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Live and learn. <laughs> I am just destined to screw up. I left the other thing in the other room. Great. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's try this again. Yeah, the red thing is plastic, but I don't know. I don't know. It didn't do it to that. I swear I used it before, so who knows? Well, this is starting off really well. All right, try this again. Well, now I have to wash my floor. have a little heat sink here on the pliers. All right, let's see here. These are really puny. All right, guys, what am I doing wrong here? I guess I should have practiced it before. Um, I think it's just not enough height, maybe. I just got balls. Yeah, this whole thing is very weird. I think, if you can bear with me a minute, I think I'm going to try. Uh, what am I going to try? My water is cold. 
Yeah, I'm thinking more height is probably what's needed. Um, I need a deeper vessel, I think, too. Let me see. I have to think. It's hard to do. This, I'm going with the big guns now. I found a pot. This is on the side of ridiculous. Looks like I peed on the floor here. Oh dear. That was a lot of water. Okay. All right. More water than this? All right, I'm going to go for more water. If this doesn't do it, I'm going to skip the water castings for today. I have some already made. More still. Well, you know what? Let me give this a shot and we'll see what happens. All right. What else can I do here? The process does work. But, like I said, I should have played with this before going live. All right. What can I use? All right, I'm going to try this. We'll see what happens. Oh, I gotta remember not to bend in bend over in front of this flame. Jeez, oh Pete, it's still not doing it. Honestly.
Well, I've forgotten something important, evidently, because this isn't working either. So what I'm going to do is forget this for now. I will practice up on this when I'm not live so I don't further embarrass myself and we'll keep moving. All right. My apologies for not um, trying this before we did the demo. But like I said, it's been a while since I did it. And, uh, and I didn't have any difficulty because this is the proof right here. You see these? These are all cups that I made a while back. And they're nicely cupped. And what I did was I tried to put them in pairs that matched close enough. So um, there is proof that uh, it does work. Okay. So I just have to figure out what I'm doing wrong. I need to revisit that demo that I did and see. I mean, it definitely, it's fine silver. That's what it's supposed to be. At least I think it is. Well, hook. I don't know. There's always mysteries in my world. All right. So I have my 16 gauge wire. You know, I probably did try some 14, but honestly, you could do it with 18 also. It's, it's, I think the force of the cup, you know, of that molten ball hitting the water that kind of splooshes it out into um, a cup form. So I'll figure it out and then I will report back to you. But yeah, these are nice. These are totally usable. All right. So let me get my thing out of here and regain my composure. Okay, so for these earrings, we need to have, no, I guess I didn't need to move the um, solder stuff yet. So I had uh, coiled up some 16 gauge wire and I already had the larger rings uh, coiled and cut, exposed together. Yeah, I. who knows, Tammy? Thank you. Thank you guys for, uh, for your patience with me and your understanding because there's nothing like being online and screwing up to make you realize uh, how humble you need to be. <laughs> so a little humility is good, I guess. All right, so I'm going to solder these. I'm going to attempt to solder these. Let's come down here and see if this works or not. And so I've got fine silver wire that I coiled. This is about uh, 16 millimeters round and then I have the smaller ones that are about seven I want to say six and a half uh, millimeters round sometimes you get a good fit with these rings and sometimes not so much if I have an extra one here. I have a couple soldered too in case I screw up. Okay, that's, I think that's one actually bigger a little bit. Yeah, I think I'll go with those first. And being that they're fine silver, they don't need to have any solder. 
Okay. All right. Now I'm going to use my bad torch <laughs> that blew up at me yesterday. It was my own fault. But you know, I honestly, I guess sometimes you just get sloppy or careless or whatever when you're working and um, you just figure you've got it all under control and then you find out, hey, um, I don't know, I'd never done that before with the torch. So all right. I'm just disconnecting these jump rings with very fine uh, micro razor cut flush cut um, cutters, which I love. They're my favorites. Close those. And I forgot that I'm going to be adding texture to these, so I need to do something on the rolling mill too that I didn't adjust prior because my mind has been all over the place. All right. All right. So hopefully I won't melt this. And I try to turn the seam facing me so that I know where to zero in on the heat. Uh, but this one I didn't place quite uh, in front, so I had to move it a little bit. And there we go. Go to the next one here. And if you don't have a rolling mill, say if you want to texture these and you don't have a rolling mill, you can uh, use a texture hammer or metal stamps to get a little bit of texture on there. That's entirely up to you. You don't always have to have all the, all the tools, uh, you can improvise with some. Some things are absolutely necessary, you have to have, but um, you can make do with uh, texture stamps or texture hammers. Okay. Where's my water? Of course, I moved it out of, where did I move it? Oh, it's in the, it's in the big bucket. Okay. This one stuck to my board a little bit. That's what happens when you spray your stuff with flux and you solder. You get uh, the board sometimes sticks to your piece. And generally when that happens, I kind of just take my flex shaft and a coarse uh, a coarse wheel and knock that off rather than waste a lot of time filing if you're just Getting the schmutz off, you can get it off with that. Hey, Wendy. Okay. Now, if you if you're doing this at home, um. If you're doing this at home, you can take the time. I mean, when you're doing this, not like I'm doing it here on a live demo, you can take more time to clean these up a little bit better. Uh, these are not very, very nice looking at this point. 
what I would do, or what I'm gonna do right now, is I'm gonna put these through the rolling mill. And, oh, I've got a little schmutz on this one too. Okay. Make sure they're dry before I put them in the rolling mill. I don't wanna create another problem. All right, let's see here. I'm going to go behind me here because that's where my rolling mill is. And I'm going to put a little texture on these uh, pieces right here. And what I like to do, I don't know if you can see me or not, uh, it, it really doesn't matter what texture you pick because you're only going to get a small, tiny bit um, of the texture showing. So what I do is I put it on my rolling mill plate. I'm going to have to do the two thicker ones first. And then I take a piece of rolling mill resource texture paper. don't want to uh, do too much because I don't want to change the shape but it's just enough it's just enough to add texture on it actually textures both sides because I put the uh, rolling mill paper on the opposite side so you get front and back textured at the same time and let me do the two little ones And you're not using, like I said, you're not using a ton of pressure, so it's not going to um, hurt my rolling mill plate, in case you're concerned with that. And you should be concerned with that. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to mess up your rolling mill. And that's just enough. All right, back to duty here. All right, so I've got my little teenies textured. All right, can you see that? You might not be able to tell too close to the camera. Now I dropped it, and where did it go? It could not have gone far. Here it is. All right, so I have my big and my littles. You can see those right here. So those are textured. Okay. All right, so now, now I'm going to make some of the little well I'll go ahead and I'll stamp out the two little discs that I want I'm kind of like all over the place here and I know you guys if you're working with silver you're keeping your scraps so even something this small is very useful still to make these small little little circles. So I'm going to, which one did I use? I'm going to use this one. Put a little bit of lube on here. And put my, I've got the old model Peppy Tools disc punch disc cutter and okay put that in there there's my hammer put my big old hammer and my little disc came out 
that looks smaller than you. Oh yeah, that's smaller than what I need. Okay, I needed to go up to the next one. There we go. Where's the Clip this one just right at the very edge. I didn't have it in very well. Damn. Let's see if I can still get another one out of that. Afraid my phone's going to drop down. Okay, that's better. One little edge, I just didn't push that uh, silver over too far. All right, so I've got that. Got my parts. All right, I'm going to pick two castings. castings right there all right all right so now I'm gonna start cutting some wire all right I've got a little point on the end of this wire I want to get rid of that And on this end, I am going to use my round, small round nose pliers and make a little loop. I want it to touch the wire here. It looks like a little P. And then I'm going to stick the tine, one of the tines in the, in the hole of that loop and then push it back so I have a little loop. All right. Now I'm going to cut. Now this is random. You know, this is why um, I kind of just don't always measure stuff, but you certainly can if you want everything to be just so. And I'm going to, let's see, how long did I make? This one. I'll cut it right about here because I'm going to torch the, uh, <clears throat> put a little ball on the end. So again, I'm going to cut the little point off of here. Make a little loop again. should make uh, your components uh, for each earring at the same time if you want to try to get the same lengths. So I'm going to line this up and cut it. So theoretically those should be the same lengths. And then I'll cut, let's see here, I'll cut, well, I'll make my loop again because you still need to have all your loops on the ends. I'll 
this one I want to be longer so this one I'll be putting on the water casting so that one's a little bit longer <clears throat> And, you know, because this wire is kind of soft, it gets manhandled pretty easily. So just kind of bring them back into shape with your pliers. Okay. And then I'm going to make two more. That will be used for something else. So you make your little P, bend it backwards, and then this one I'm going to make a little longer. Hope you guys can see everything okay. I know it's kind of far away. All right. This one needs to be straightened out a little bit. So I'm using flat nose, round nose uh, to uh, straighten these out a little. All right, and now I need, what else do I need? I have three, I need four. I need my little wavy piece. So, cut that point off. These are a little bit um, weird to do. I mean, they're kind of fun, but they're also kind of um, intimidating because it's I don't know. I guess I guess you just need more coordination than I have. Now, what I want to do is I'm at my flat nose pliers. I think you can use chain nose with this as well, but I'm just going to bend the wire like that, and then put it in where the bend is. Put the plier in where the bend is, and then. Bend it back, okay, and then put it in where the bend is again, and pull it back, I hope you get the gist of this. Kind of making a little zigzag. Okay. And now I'm going to cut off some excess there. And what I want to do with this is bend it down, kind of straighten this all up, and then I'll ball the end of this right here. Now, trying to make another one that matches that is not going to be simple, or not going to be too easy, I don't think, but 
We'll give it a shot. And if they don't match exactly, uh, it, it doesn't matter all that much because they're on two separate ears. Um, but I do try, I do try to make them as uh, matchy matchy as I can. A little more distance between here. But they're close enough, I guess. This one has a little more prominent bend to it. You can kind of manipulate the wire a little bit without overworking it. A little bit too wide. Well, they're definitely different, but close enough. Close, but no cigar. All right, so then I'll cut that off right there. I always hate to cut the wire off as I'm working because sometimes um, I overcut it and then or cut too much and then I'm left with odd uh, pieces of wire. But in this case uh, with fine sterling if you have little bits and stuff you can make little balls with it too. But as you saw from my failure earlier, I'm going to have plenty of uh, silver to make balls with. Okay. I'm just trying to get this loop a little bit nicer without killing my silver, denting it. Okay. So, a little different. This one's longer. But also, when you ball up the wire, it pulls, you know, it draws up the, the wire. So um, sometimes you lose a little bit of your shape because it gets uh, eaten up in the flame going towards making the ball, if, if I'm explaining that right. All right, so now I'm going to ball up all the ends on all of these pieces, and then we'll go from there. All right, let me move this out of the way. Get my raise that up a little bit, so hopefully you can see better. All right, and. Okay, that one's one. Oh, 
control control on that one if you can see that Sometimes I can't tell if I'm right in the tip of the flame or or not because it seems like my hand waves around a little bit, moves a little bit. And it looks like I'm not. I'm not in the right place or I'm losing heat, I guess. Ugh. This torch. I like it because it's got a fine flame. And this one's got a really big one. Okay. Nice ball on there. One left. Okay. So now it's all hot. Well, I don't need that anyway. All right, so now I'm going to dry these off. So there's balls on the ends of all of these. Now I'm going to put this all together without pickling or tumbling just so that you see uh, how to assemble all of it. But after this is done, then I will make sure that those steps get taken. All right. All right, so I have my little components there. And my two little discs and my two water castings. And let's see here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is the two short ones, the shortest ones I'm going to leave just as is. Okay, so I'm going to put those over to the side. And these are done. But these two, or these four, are what I'm going to solder on our little pieces to. That's up. 
And what I'm going to do with this is just give these little balls a smash. That's my little soldering surface. You could leave these little things just the way they are and not solder anything on them as well. That's another idea that you could play around with. Or you could hit them with a little texture hammer if you wanted to do that. But I just wanted to have a flat surface. And also on the water casting, um, if they don't sit pretty evenly on the uh, well if if the curve is too deep you might need to sand the very bottom uh, just so that they sit right on top of your um, the silver ball there and that is done this is a little tip from Tanya Davidson that uh, she posted this tip a few years ago, I believe, and right before the broadcast today, I was looking for my double stick tape. This is, this came on a roll that she, um, oh, put out as a reference, uh, you know, to buy it. But this one, this one has been used up and it doesn't really have the sticky left on it, but I'm just showing you this, uh, just for reference, you'd put the cup side down into the sticky and then over a piece of sandpaper you would sand a little flat spot on the bottom and it's a wonderful little tip uh, that she came up with a way to hold on to that area uh, to hold on to these little cups uh, so that you can solder on them a little bit easier so I'll uh, I'll try to find the link. Uh, I got it on Amazon and um, it comes in a fairly good size roll. You'll probably have it forever. And I know I'll have mine forever if I can't ever find it. Uh, it's in my closet somewhere, I'm sure, down here. But I didn't have enough time to to look for it because I thought of it too late. Anyway, what I did was I double stick taped um, a piece of sandpaper on another piece of acrylic board. And then this is just an acrylic square. These are like stamping, acrylic stamping blocks. And um, so now they're just used for this. Okay. All right. So now it's time to solder these little guys together. And I need to put some butane back in here. So my flame is off. The torch is cool. I will forever uh, keep that in my memory now that that happened. Sure don't want that to happen to you. I was very lucky. I my whole hair head of hair could have gone up, and I could have had burns on my face as well. It didn't even burn off my chin hairs. <laughs> when I was telling Al about it last night, after it happened, he goes, "Oh well, you can still work for the circus then." <laughs> He's always such a funny guy. I can be the bearded lady in the circus. All right, so make sure you um, put the right ones together. And did I bring? No, I didn't. Hang on again. Oh, that wasn't me. That was Oh. Hey, Kathy. Okay, so I've got my little um, 
hummingbird holders. And I am going to use a little bit of easy paste solder. And this is the new solder that came that uh, is from uh, Peppy Tools. And it doesn't have any of the cadmium in it, the bad stuff that um, solder paste or paste solder has had. So I feel better about using this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put my little disc upside down and then my little paddle right there on there and then put my little hummingbird right on that little pad to hold it in place move these things out of the way. Kathy, you said it's blue tack. That's the name of it. Okay. I'll look that up, but I know I've got it in my history in my Amazon sales because I purchased it there. All right. So I have this ready to go. If you can see that, I hope. Let's see if I can raise this up just a little bit. Maybe that'll be a little easier for you guys to see. I don't know if it makes that much difference. And I'm using my fine micro torch because I've got fine silver wire and I don't want to melt that. And the paste solder always gives a little smoke. That's normal. And it takes a little bit longer to heat up because I've got this hummingbird uh, taking some of the heat. Okay, that's soldered. And, you know, these hummingbirds get quite hot when you're using them. So a good way to cool them off is to stick them on some steel, like your bench block, or if you have impression dies on the reverse side, uh, of the impression die, you can stick it on there and it'll help cool that metal off faster. And so now I have my little, one of my little paddle things done here. And stick that in the pickle. If I could reach it, that would be nice. You know, I need one more hand. Two more would actually be better, but one more hand would be nice. Okay, so that's in the pickle. And now I'll get ready for the other one. It's mate. Texture side down on the board. I've got a little bit of paste solder on here. Putting my on the center just so it doesn't move because sometimes that happens My little disc is sterling silver, not fine silver. So that's why I have to put it in the pickle. Although, you know, using the solder makes you need the pickle as well. Okay. I always remove these with my pliers because they're hot. That's soldered on quench it and into the pickle it goes. Okay. All right. 
Okay, now the next one is putting the water casting on. So the cup goes upside down. Need a little paste solder. And on this one, I didn't bring them here. Hang on again. On this one, I want to elevate that wire. So I'm going to put a few shims, titanium shims underneath this wire just to keep it from moving. Actually, that's probably going to be good enough right there. The needles get stopped up. Um, not sure what you mean, Deborah. Can you elaborate on that? Okay, so I've got my water casting on here with a little easy paste solder and held down with a hummingbird holder. And the wire end propped up with um, some titanium shims. And if you are new to the hummingbird holders, if you haven't seen them or heard of them or don't have them, um, the person to get in contact with is his name is Ely Gamini, and he is on Facebook. I'll put uh, his name on the references uh, after, you know, with your handout and stuff. And then uh, he doesn't have a website, but he sells uh, these uh, hummingbirds through his messenger. So if you want to get in contact with him, just send him a message and he will give you the information uh, on how to purchase and what styles he has available. And I've got to tell you, these little guys, these little one inchers, I think they're one inch. Um, they're my favorite size. He's got several different styles. He's got one that's twice as long. And I have a couple of those as well. But these are great uh, at saving space because sometimes you need to use several of them on your project to hold things down. And um, this little one inch size is great. No, Deborah, I do not use the needles uh, on the flux, on these flux uh, syringes. They always seem to plug up on me, and I just take the little cap off, the protective cap off, and, um, and use it that way. So, I mean, if you, let's see here. Yeah, I yeah, I I don't use the needle. So I, I've tried it a few times and it, it just never seems to to squeeze out well for me. Maybe they're not thick enough or maybe I'm a weakling, I don't know. But I just use the cap. And sometimes a little more squeezes out than I want, and I'll use my solder pick to kind of move it around. So okay, so this is the last one to solder here.
And there you go. Got the little cup soldered on there. Pinch that, get that in the pickle. Okay, let me move this junk out of my way and then we can start to assemble. And these shims get a lot of flux if you're using flux. Um, they get stuck on, but you can put these in the pickle and it'll eat all that stuff off. So just another little thing to know. All right, so here we go. I'm going to be using four millimeter sterling jump rings. So put everything together. I've got my ear wires. be out there. Hey, Sunny. Okay. All right. So we have our pieces. Well, these pieces so far. And what I'm going to do, where's my model here? I used a larger size jump ring, which I have to get. Jump rings, where are you? Okay. All right. So the assembly is easy. I see I need to make some more jump rings. I'm running low here. That's a whole process in itself. All right. Like I said, I would be tumbling these uh, before I actually assembled everything. But they can tumble. Since there's no stones or anything in them, they can tumble afterwards just as well. So I'm, I'm taking, I think it's, what is this? This is a six millimeter jump ring. I think you could probably use a, a different different size if you wanted to. I'm going to connect this to my ear wire right here. No, I'm not. I have to have a four millimeter first. So I'll close this. On this pair, I have the double ring. Okay. Right here. And on this one, I will add just to see the difference. That's not the same. I have a few of my jump rings mixed up. The sizes aren't accurate. All right, so that's not going to work. Well, that doesn't matter at this point. Let's just try something that works. So I'm going to put my B. This is another, um, I guess I need to move over here. If you wanted to put a little tiny charm on instead of the other link, uh, you could do it that way. So the B would go on first. Okay, 
So I have one with a B. And one with the double link. You don't have to put your ear wires on first. I just am doing this just to show you. Okay. All right. So then I will hook these guys on with uh, four millimeter jump rings. To the bottom of the wire here of the uh, circle link. And I've got to get those others out of the pickle. And you can arrange them in whatever order you want on here. There's no rules. Just because I'm doing it one way doesn't mean you have to do it the same way. That's the beauty of doing your own thing. Sure, you've closed those jump rings nice and flush so you don't have any scratchy stuff. Okay, so I have those parts on, and let me grab those other things out of the pickle. Fishing out of the pickle. There we go. All right. Now, your pieces might need a little cleanup and also a little straightening. They'll harden up once they get in the uh, tumbler. And you can either patina these or not. Just really depends on what you like. I think I made these paddles a little long. If you have a nice svelte long neck, uh, you can get away with wearing uh, longer earrings. Uh, I do not have that long slender neck. I have a Chinook, so <laughs> my earrings tend to be a little shorter, and that's okay. those. And I just need my cups out of the pickle. They actually could have benefited maybe a little bit longer in there, but that's okay. Rinse those off. All right. 
So I would say this demo went okay, except for the water casting part. Um, but, you know, I'll get that figured out and then I'll do a recap or else I'll post uh, the old demo that I did on it. And you guys um, know, I hope you know, most of you probably do, that you can see any of my previous demos on YouTube. Um, I'll put a link to that too. So they're all done pretty much in the order. Well, no, I was going to say they're done in the order that I did them, but um, I didn't think to put them on YouTube till well after the fact. So some of them were added like all in one date. But um, I'll find a link for that and post it in the group just so you can um, take a look at the correct way to do it. Okay, so these are our project for today. And I'm going to um, put them in the tumbler and get them nice and shiny. Yeah, this, these are definitely, um, at least the ones with the little paddles on the ends, they're definitely longer than the original pair. But that's okay. I have a, a show this weekend, so um, I'll take whatever I haven't uh, sold. I think I would arrange these differently because the two shorter ones are on one side. But that's like not a big deal at all. They can just be re reconfigured here. So that's that. Thank you. Yeah, they are a little funky. I, you know, I have trouble naming, naming my projects. Um, and some, some of them I think are really kind of dumb, <laughs> but I don't know, you know, what to call them. I'm not one of those people that, you know, neat names come too easily, you know, like some ethereal, beautiful, you know, that's not my style. I'd like it to be, but it's not. So anyway, that's, these are them. And we made it. We made it all the way through. And, and I made both earrings. It just ran over a little bit longer than I usually take. But I will, I will attribute that to the uh, fiasco that I had earlier with the water castings and then spilling all the water all over the place and not having everything up here uh, that I should have because I guess I didn't think it out well enough. So, such is usually the case. Okay. All right. So thanks. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, I think they're fun. I like to do something different. Um, like I said, sometimes things come to me, sometimes they don't. And I'll sit there for the longest time trying to figure out something that I haven't done that maybe nobody else has done. But um, pretty much, you know, I mean, stuff comes along. So, yeah, I mean, if you have a longer neck, I mean, these would lay on my on my shoulders, I think. But um, the other ones are okay. I wore those last week, and, and they were all right. But anyway. So I have a bunch of other things uh, coming up in the works. And uh, I don't know what I'll do in two weeks, but it... It may be more fallish, Halloweenish uh, stuff, you know. So I don't know, but um, I thank you for being here with me. If you have any questions or anything, um, you know, feel free to ask. I will post the instructions in a few minutes um, in the group and also list some resources, um, you know, of where you can get things. And those hummingbirds, if you haven't uh, gotten any or haven't heard of them before and you solder, they are super, super handy to, uh, to have. So I highly recommend them. 
And I think that's it. So thanks for being with me and, uh, <laughs> and being positive when I have flubs. So that always helps. So take care. I always enjoy you guys being here with me. And I'll see you in the group. Bye-bye.